Hello and welcome. Failure Modes and Effects Analysis, abbreviated as FMEA, is a structured approach for identifying the ways that a product or process can fail, what causes the failure, and how this affects the customer. FMEA is a bottom-up inductive analytical method. This means that we study the failure modes of individual components within a system, identify their effects, and trace their causes. After estimating the risk associated with specific failures and causes, the FMEA helps us to prioritize and take actions to reduce the risk. We can benefit from doing failure modes and effects analysis whenever we need to identify and manage risk. These include when we're getting ready to launch a new project, a new process, or develop new products. Also, FMEA helps us when we are planning changes to operating conditions, products or process designs, and when there are new regulations or when we have new customer requirements that we must meet. There are five notable features of FMEAs. First, it's essential to perform failure modes and effects analysis as a team activity. This ensures that we capture as many possible risks as we can, involve stakeholders and interface with technical experts, and build consensus on the actions we will implement to reduce risk. Second, FMEA uses a standard format and specific terminology. While these are not difficult to learn, it's important to be familiar with them. Also, some industries, such as the automotive industry, specify an exact format and standard to follow for doing FMEAs. Third, the FMEA follows a structured step-by-step -step process. These steps closely follow the structure of the FMEA template. FMEA is often described as an eight, nine, or 10 step process based on the eight main sections of the template. Fourth, an FMEA is a living document. We must recognize that as we make improvements to the process, we must review and update our FMEAs. This should be done at least once per year. It's often more frequent based on regulatory requirements or based on product, materials, environment, or process changes. The fifth point to note is that in many instances, the FMEA is considered a legal document that must be validated, controlled, and stored accordingly. The findings and actions of FMEA activities may be used to support investigations into accidents, warranty, or other contract or performance issues. FMEA can be used to evaluate and mitigate risks across a wide range of applications such as safety, products, systems, environmental, projects, and others. However, broadly speaking, there are two types of FMEAs. These are process FMEAs and design FMEAs. The process FMEA, abbreviated PFMEA, investigates the functions and failures of existing processes, services, systems, equipment, etc. The process FMEA is used to analyze new and existing manufacturing processes, to identify deficiencies in our current control plans, to evaluate risks when making changes to our processes, and more. The second type is the design FMEA, abbreviated DFMEA. We use this to evaluate the risks related to a product's design. The objective is to thoroughly examine how a product can fail during its useful lifetime. Design FMEAs can be conducted at different phases of the design process, such as concept development, prototype, final design, and even to study failure modes of a product currently in production. The overall process for doing a failure modes and effects analysis is the same for products, processes, services, projects, or any other type of risk. However, there are four notable differences between process-focused FMEAs and product-focused or design FMEAs. First, the nature of the function that each type of FMEA studies is different. Process FMEAs examine how a process may fail to produce a desired function. On the other hand, a design FMEA examines risks of a product being unsafe, unreliable, or otherwise unable to meet the customer's needs. For a process FMEA, the function column on the far left of the worksheet will list process steps that create these part characteristics or meet the customer's service requirements. For a design FMEA, the function column on the far left of the worksheet will list features that customers want from our product or service. A second difference is in how we set the scope for an FMEA activity. Scoping a process FMEA project is generally simpler than for products. It can be done with a block diagram supplemented by an interface matrix when needed. 
For design FMEAs, it's necessary to consider complex interactions between components and subsystems and how these affect risk. This often requires looking across multiple levels such as product, system, subassembly, components, and piece parts. Scoping for DFMEA requires additional visualization tools such as boundary diagrams, the P diagram, or interface matrix when setting the scope for a design FMEA. Third, the ranking scales for severity, occurrence, and detection will follow the same principles but cover different content and will have different definitions. And fourth, the outputs between the two are different. For a design FMEA, these are typically a design verification plan, a robustness checklist, and a design sign-off report. The output of a process FMEA includes a revised or enhanced control plan, or alternatively a dynamic control plan, part drawings showing the special characteristics, and actions to improve methods, materials, equipment, training, or the operating environment. In addition to validating product or process specifications to meet regulatory or customer requirements, FMEAs are widely used in continuous improvement circles. Within the Six Sigma DMAIC process, FMEA plays a key role in the analyze phase to find the critical X. In addition, we can use the FMEA to identify potential variables to consider when planning multivariate analysis and design of experiments or DOE studies. Failure modes and effects analysis is particularly helpful in TPM. FMEA is used to analyze sources of equipment failures and breakdowns and to set up periodic and preventive maintenance activities to prevent them. The FMEA can also be employed at the very beginning of a large project or launch of a transformation effort to evaluate and plan for possible risks. Likewise, Many use FMEA at the conclusion of a cycle improvement activity to identify remaining risks or reasons that we may fail to sustain our gains. By periodically reviewing and taking action on sources of risk, the FMEA enables us to make our processes, products, projects, services, or other systems safer, better, and more reliable. That wraps up our review of FMEA, or Failure Modes and Effects Analysis. We'll see you soon.